Okay, hello mass market for LED bulbs. Uh, this is a great value 60 watt equivalency. Uh, great value is a brand name of uh, Walmart. And obviously Walmart's a pretty uh, large retailer. Very class competitive. Uh, in America, under $9. In Canada, under $12 for the bulb. Uh, 800 lumens and 11 watts. So uh, really good numbers. Uh, you can't do much better other than maybe you can get a 10 watt bulb at 800 lumens. 25,000 hours and a uh, three year, three hours per day residential warrant. Well, first things first, here's the bulb. How exciting. A little unusual, first thing you notice actually is it's uh, dramatically larger in diameter than a, a traditional bulb. Uh, there's an IKEA bulb, here's um, actually just an incandescent light bulb, uh, here's a Cree bulb. So they clearly uh, something going on here with a very large diameter and that must be buying them some sort of ability. Okay, light distribution around the bulb. Uh, one thing you find with a lot of low-end vendors, uh, especially Walmart, you're not going to find a lot of technical information on the bulb. Uh, but if the bulb's a good perform, it has to emulate the old A-shaped bulb. Otherwise, uh, when you screw it into your light fixture, uh, you'll get very different results. So um, that is the domain of this kind of graph, basically recording the amount of light intensity and 10 degree angles. And of course, the larger the number, the greater the distribution. And uh, putting that into uh, um, Excel here, in this case. A couple plots, actually. I plotted uh, the bulb here, the Walmart bulb on the outer curve. And it, it's quite good, actually. Uh, it's got uh, good lobes on the sides, like slightly depressed in the middle. Uh, that's about right. Uh, so this is making a good emulation. And I guess that's my first surprise at $8 or a $9 bulb. I wasn't expecting a great deal from it, so that's good. The inner circle here is just a plot of a standard incandescent bulb, and uh, sim so it's showing a similar type uh, shape. Okay, let's see if we can analyze the quality of light from this bulb. Probably it's the white light coming out, but if you break that light up into its constituent components with a spectrometer, you can learn some really cool things. Now, you can see this, this obviously looks handmade, well, because it is. Um, there's some really neat construction products out in the web you can use uh, to create your own spectrometer. Let's take a look at the output uh, of uh, mine. Now, I haven't calibrated mine, but uh, what I am using it for is to compare bulbs uh, relatively. The curve on top there is the incandescent, and the curve below, of course, is the bulb we're looking at today. And you can see there's a dip uh, in uh, spectral power density from the green to the blue. And, of course, um, that suggests that the output of light isn't quite exactly the same as the incandescent. Now, all the LED bulbs I've torn down seem to have this dip, uh, but I must say this dip on this bulb seems to be sharper than most. Now, on the packaging, there's no claims to the quality of light coming of this bulb, so it may, perhaps this is one of the compromises that they've made to create a slightly cheaper bulb, so uh, very interesting. Okay, uh, the next measurement here is also about light quality, uh, it's about flicker. Uh, LEDs, of course, don't flicker, but uh, often the uh, manufacturer of these bulbs will produce an incomplete uh, rectification and filtering of the AC voltage into something that the LEDs can use, and that results in flicker. It's a very easy thing to actually look for. Solar cell, of course, converting uh, light to electricity hooked up in the oscilloscope. And when we look at the uh, output of the oscilloscope, you can see a, a characteristic uh, pattern. Uh, very often uh, a 120 hertz uh, frequency. So, um, not a big surprise. The flicker in this bulb is about uh, mid-range. So this is a, a watt meter. It tells me the bulb is drawing 10.5 watts, and of course the packaging says 11 watts, so it's actually well below the specs. Which is a nice surprise. The last couple bulbs they've turned down actually seem to be recording and drawing more wattage than they claim. So, good truthful number on the package. Okay, teardown time! Let's see how this thing is made. Okay, domes and roofed, obviously, and uh, what we're looking at is a planar array of LEDs. That's kind of interesting. Uh, I think this is what's settling down to be the cheap way of building a bulb, uh, seeing this approach. What does surprise me, though, is the light pattern was quite good. In fact, uh, better than the other ones I've also torn down prior to this. Uh, one thing we noticed at the very start of this video was this dome seemed to be unusually large, and perhaps that's contributing to uh, the light coming out of the size a little bit better. Uh, let's just zoom in a little bit. There are some uh, instant issues you see with the assembly, though. Okay, we're really zoomed into the array here, and uh, if you look very carefully, you can see a little solder splash here. Uh, probably from the hand soldering of the bulb, and that's the problem, of course, when you put a human into any production product, you get design variability. Uh, there are some vendors out there who actually try to automate the process as much as possible. Uh, that doesn't look like one. No, the problem, of course, solder splashes are big enough, of course, they, they can um, fall across your bulb and cause some uh, non-functionality. Uh, or, uh, of course, in this case, it's just simply blocking a bit of light off the bulb. 
Okay, some more industrial archaeology. This bulb uh, claims a UL listing and they list the number here as they required and you can go onto a database and uh, pull up the course files. Uh, and it tells me that uh, this bulb is registered to the Technical Consumer Products Incorporated. There's their address, an American address, of course. Okay, well, uh, web search shows uh, this to be the company, TCP Incorporated, and uh, they're in Ohio. Okay, obviously the base has been opened up. Um, here it is here, uh, the main AC-DC converter. You can see the potting compound doesn't go all the way through the base. Uh, all the previous bulbs other than the Cree uh, did that. And you can even see this uh, DC capacitor, this is the smoothing capacitor, the input power supply is half in and half out the potting compound. The um, outer shell here, it's obviously aluminum. It's very, very light. And you can see there's no fins on it. Uh, unlike a lot of the LED bulbs I've been tearing down with lots of fins, uh, to get that heat from the LEDs and reject it into the atmosphere. This one, of course, wouldn't have great performance. It's very smooth-sided. Uh, some sort of plastic holder, which uh, holds the uh, the Edison A base and um, a little uh, retention ring. Okay, uh, obviously this is an AC-DC converter, a very standard topology AC on this side here, and of course DC out. Uh, there's a fuse here, of course, that'll go open uh, if the bulb has a serious fault. Uh, there's a inductor and a capacitor, and they form a um, EMI filter to prevent uh, noise from the bulb going back into the power line, uh, so-called conducted emissions. It uh, looks like an isolated design of the transformer here. I'll just flip it over. Uh, it appears that there's one uh, main control IC here. Uh, now, it's been de-identified, so they're trying to hide something. Uh, but you can't actually see what's on the package, so you'd have to decap it to go further into it. So. Uh, it, a bridge rectifier here, of course, uh, and then just some miscellaneous components. Uh, the uh, DC smoothing capacitors are um, ash high and they're uh, rated to 105 degrees. In terms of workmanship, uh, it seems okay. It's, it's surface mat on the bottom, uh, they glue dot the parts down and they uh, then stuff the top side with a through hole and they waste solder in. Uh, the only thing you really note is that there's one component where the the holes for it are actually far too big, so you actually get a little bit of solder below. Okay, let's zoom it in here. Um, and my camera won't focus, so... Let me take a still picture. Uh, right here you can see that the leads uh, obviously have gone through, but there's actually some solder voiding, which um, in a lot of companies would be a reject. Okay, well the emitter ray has been uh, removed from the base here. Um, no surprise, it's an aluminum substrate. Um, here's sort of the uh, second discouraging note regarding the assembly. The white stuff, of course, is thermal interface compound. Um, and, of course, it allows the heat that, to get off the LEDs uh, and into this heat sink and then uh, away. Uh, because if these LEDs get too hot and run too hot for too long, uh, they will fail too soon. And, if, unfortunately, I would have very much hoped that they would have put the uh, conductive paste uh, entirely around the surface here. Uh, so some of these LEDs will get hotter than others. 